Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to observe the differences between the explicit and the implicit normalizations of floating point numbers. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will at first observe the problem associated with explicit normalization. Thereafter, we will observe the solution provided by the implicit normalization form. Now, in the previous session, while talking about normalization, we observed there are two types of it, the explicit normalization and the implicit normalization. Now, in case of explicit normalization, we are supposed to move the radix point to the left-hand side of the most significant one in the bit sequence, whereas in case of implicit normalization, we are supposed to move the radix point to the right-hand side of the most significant one in the bit sequence. Now, in this session, let me illustrate what difference does this make. So, let's try to find out the explicit versus implicit normalization with a proper example. Say we are given a 10-bit memory space where the MSB specify the sign bit, the next 4-bit is for the exponent, and finally, the last 5 bits are dedicated for Mantisa. Now, say we are going to store the value 5.625 in binary, that is 101, radix point followed by 101, in this particular fixed bit memory space in both explicit and implicit normalization form. So, let's start off with the explicit normalization form. Basically, what we will do, we will represent this particular value in explicit normalization and thereafter we will observe how that is saved in this fixed 10 bit memory space. Now, remember, we are starting off with explicit normalization. Now, if we convert this bit sequence in explicit normalization form, we will end up having something like this. Basically, we are supposed to move the radix point from its original place and place it towards the left-hand side of the most significant one in this bit sequence. So, that is what we have done. And in order to do so, we had to move the radix point 3 bits towards the left. And that is the reason why the exponent of the base 2 is to be set as 3. So, this is the explicit normal form of this value. Now, let's observe how it will be saved in this 10-bit memory space. Now, since 5.625 is a positive number, therefore, the sign is naturally going to be 0. So, the value in the sign bits field will be 0. Now, coming to the exponent, it is 3, right? But we cannot use it directly. We are going to add the bias with this. Because if you remember, for 4 bits, we will use excess 8 biasing. So, 3 plus 8 will eventually be 11. Now, 11 in binary, or to be specific, in 4-bit binary is 1011. Therefore, in this particular 4-bit field, we are going to save the value 1011, which will basically reflect the biased exponent. Now, coming to the Mantisa, it is 101101. Basically, the entire bit sequence after the radix point. Now, if you observe closely, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 bits in the Mantisa. But in case of our specified field, the Mantisa is only of 5 bits. So, as a result, our machine will omit this one. So, this will be omitted. And the remaining portion that is 10110, these 5 bits will be saved in the Mantisa portion. So, if 10 bits are specified like this, in that case, this value in explicit normalization form will be stored in the fixed memory like this. Now, let's observe how it will be stored in case of implicit normalization. Now, if you remember, in case of implicit normalization, we are supposed to move the radix point to the right hand side of the most significant one in the bit sequence. And if we do so, we will end up having something like this. So basically, we moved the radix point from its original place 2 bits towards its left. And that is the reason why the base will have the exponent as 2. Now, similar to the previous one, here also the sign bit is going to be 0. Now, in case of exponent, it is 2, right? However, we are going to use the biasing technique. Therefore, the exponent 2, after being added with 8, will give us the value 10. Now, 10 in binary, specifically in 4-bit binary, is 1010. So, in the exponent field, we are going to save 1010. Now, coming to the Mantisa part, we are having 01101. Observe, after the radix point, the bits are 01101. Now, let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, only 5 bits. Now, we are going to store this entire bit sequence without losing any bits. So, in the Mantisa portion, we are going to store the value 01101. So, this is how, in case of implicit normalization form, this bit sequence is going to be saved in the fixed 10-bit memory space. Now, you might be wondering, okay, in case of explicit normalization, we lost one bit. 
but losing one bit, will it make a big difference? So let me trace back both of these into human readable form and you will see for yourself. Now if you remember, in case of explicit normalization, the formula for reverting back was minus 1 raised to the power sine bit multiplied by 0 point mantissa portion. That is the mantissa portion stored in here. And why we are placing 0 point? Because in case of explicit normalization, the radix point is supposed to be placed towards the left hand side of the most significant one in the bit sequence. Now coming to the exponent, this is not the real exponent, right? This is the biased one. Therefore, while retrieving back that data, we need to subtract the bias from the exponent portion to get the actual value. Now since it is 0, here it will be minus 1 raised to the power 0. And after 0 point, we are placing the entire mantissa portion that is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now coming to the exponent, the exponent that we have saved is 11. And the bias was 8. So 11 minus 8 will give us the actual value that is 3. Now think about it. This will result in 1. And multiplying 2 cubed with this, we will end up having 101.1. Because the last 0, we are simply going to ignore that. Now 101 is 5 and 0.1 is actually 0.5. So we are getting back the value 5.5. Now, in case of implicit normal form, if you remember, the formula for retrieving the data back to human readable form was something like this. Minus 1 raised to the power of the sine bit multiplied by 1 point mantissa, that is this mantissa portion. And why we are placing 1 point? Because if you remember, it is 1.01101. Basically, we place the radix point towards the right hand side of the most significant one in the entire bit sequence. And coming to the exponent, the same drill is to be performed. Now, since the sine bit is 0, this minus 1 raised to the power 0 will entirely give us 1, multiplied with 1.01101, that is this entire mantissa portion. Now, coming to the exponent, we have stored 1010, which is the binary of the decimal value 10, and the bias was 8. So, 10 minus 8 will give us the actual exponent, that is 2. Now, think about it. Multiplying 1 with this, and thereafter multiplying 2 raised to the power 2, we will move the radix point 2 bits towards the right and finally we will end up acquiring the value 101 radix point 101 which is the value 5.625 now observe closely in case of explicit normalization form the value that we stored in the fixed bit memory space is actually incorrect whereas in case of implicit normalization form the value that we stored in the 10 bit fixed memory space is precisely the value that we wanted to store so to be really honest, implicit normalization is more precise than explicit normalization. So in this session, we observe the problem with explicit normalization first. Thereafter, we observe the solution provided by the implicit normalization. Basically, implicit normalization is more precise than explicit normalization. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to solve some interesting problems. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.